Hi there. So after I got home from shooting this video and I started to edit it, I noticed that you know it was kind of an overcast day and you might not be able to make out some of the detailed work that I was doing, uh, especially setting for the uh, trigger and for the stake that goes in the ground. So hang out after the video and I'm going to do some close-ups of uh, you know my carvings that I did in that uh, just so you get a better look at it. So okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hi there. Today what I'm going to show you in this video is how to make a spring-loaded snare trap. Now for this what we'll need is uh, we'll need a stick, uh, one short piece, one longer piece. Basically I just cut this off of this piece so it was really from the same piece of wood. We will need a piece of wire for the snare part. Now this is gonna, the length of this is gonna depend on what you're trying to snare. Uh, we're gonna set this up as a rabbit snare. So uh, you don't need like a super long piece for this. Uh, we we'll also need a piece of string or twine, a small stick, which I'll show you what to do with that in a couple minutes. And uh, when you're out setting this trap, what you're going to need is a nice sapling nearby that you can bend over to give yourself some spring. But what I found that we can use to practice this, this is one of those reflective posts that you put at the end of your driveway. You can buy it at any hardware store. Uh, I paid like two, $2 for this. But once we put it in the ground, it has a lot of flex in it and it works great uh, to simulate a sapling that we're bending over. So you can practice this in your yard. Now. Before we get started, what I want to do is uh, have a little disclaimer out there. Um, most states, I believe, primitive trapping is not legal in, uh, and I know it's not in Pennsylvania. So these are more of just uh, practice traps. You want to check your local uh, state and game commission laws before you go uh, setting any of these out on public land or, or even private land. Um, because even then it's probably going to be illegal. So make sure you check into that before you do this. But it is a nice thing to know how to do uh, in case you are in some kind of survival situation where you need to get some food. So, and that's why I like, you know, this reflective rod because I can practice this in my yard and I don't have to uh, be out anywhere where someone might think that I'm, you know, setting this up. So, okay. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to take uh, a smaller, the smaller piece of this. And we're going to need to, to, uh, to baton this down. We're going to need to make a notch in it. So what we're going to do is I'm, just going to, I'm going to leave a little bit at the end here. We don't want to go too close to the end. You don't want your stick breaking out. Um, I'd say a third of the way through the thickness of your stick up to a half. I wouldn't go any more than a half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another notch. I'm going to give myself, uh, you know, maybe an inch down. And then when I do this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist my knife and I'm going to pop that piece out of there. Just makes it a little bit easier to get out. And I'm going to cut this down a little. Now, after I've done that, also what we can do is we want to kind of flatten this other end out. We want to keep one end like this, but we want to uh, make this one a little wider here. And you can even go, you see I kind of split it the whole way out to the end, and that's okay. Uh, you'll see whenever we put these together that um, I think that they fit a lot nicer together if this end is kind of flat out of there. So I'm just going to flatten this out a little bit. And as with all traps and even a lot of things that you baton out and you're whittling uh, and making notches, sometimes you just kind of have to play with them after you get it done. So we're going to stop right there with that for now. And we're going to work on the other end until we see how this fits together. Now, this other end, one end of this is going to go down into the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, whittle this down into a point. Now, you don't want it to be, you don't need to make it, you know, super uh, spear point sharp or anything like that. More like a, a, one of those big fat number two pencils. Uh, well, they might not be number two, I guess, if they're the big fat ones. But you know what I mean, it used to have in grade school. And when it needed sharpened, how the end of that looked, that's kind of what we're going for here. Really 
really what we need, we just need enough that we can pound this down into the ground. Now on the other end, whenever I'm pounding something into the ground, I like to uh, just go around the edge, kind of take off a little bit. I think it keeps it from splitting out as easily whenever you do that. Okay, so now this is going to be the top part, and then this is going to be the part that's in the ground. So, what we need to do is we need to cut a notch in this one also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come down from my end. I'm going to leave some part there so that I don't split it out. Same thing really, third to a half uh, way down through. You see I kind of made my notches, uh, my cuts further apart. What I can do is I can come in between them then, make another little notch, and then they can pop them out pretty easily. going to kind of smooth this out in here a little bit. So what's really going to happen is when we do this trap, these two pieces need to fit together. So you see they're kind of uh, not going to fit like that. So this is what I do to adjust this down. You know, it's a little thicker up here. So I'm just going to whittle this down a little bit, make it a little flatter so that these two pieces fit together. And um, if you can see here, what's going on is the bottom part is a little bit too long where my notch is. So I'm just going to do the same thing on this end. I'm just going to whittle this down some. Or if I had a saw or even if I wanted to do it with my knife, I could just cut the end off of this. So hopefully you can see that really when we're done, what we want are these two pieces to fit together and you can see I can pull up on that and they're catching on each other and that's what I want it to do. I want it to catch like that. Uh, this is going to be uh, our stake that goes in the ground. This is gonna be our trigger stick. So we'll put those aside for a second and we'll move on to our snare wire. Now, for our snare wire, what, basically what we need to do is we need to have a loop in one end that slides pretty freely along here. We don't want it to catch. Uh, we want, basically, we're gonna have that snare out there and when the animal goes through it, uh, if their head's gonna fit through it, but their body's not. And then as they pull on it, it's gonna tighten down on them. So, a neat little trick. What you can do to give yourself a loop that slides pretty easily is take this, just a, it's just a little twig that I found I'm going to wrap my snare wire, one end of it, around here. Now I'm going to try to keep these loops close together. And what I did was I basically I wrapped this around two times. I put two loops in there. Now what I can do is I just snap this stick and I can pull it right out. And what I end up with uh, is some nice little circle loops into this that the other end of my snare wire just slides right through. And you can see it's free uh, flowing through there. It doesn't get stuck on it. And I can shape my loop however size that I want. So there we have that. And now uh, one end of this is going to um, hook on to our trigger stick. So our trigger stick is going to be in here like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around here. Well, uh, first what I like to do before I wrap that on there is I'm going to make a couple of notches in this. Uh, I'm just going to try to keep them, you know, in a straight line going around this. And you can notch the whole thing if you want, but I found if you just put a couple in there, it's just enough to hold the wire so that when we put the snare wire in, it doesn't slide up and down on the trigger stick. Because you'll see with the wire, we can uh, tighten that right down on there and it'll hold pretty tight. So. I've just made a few notches around here. Uh, I have my looped end here. I'm going to take my other end. Now you may need to uh, adjust this or set this up after you've found your spot where you're going to use it because uh, you want to have this snare wire the right length for what you're trying to do. 
But once I do that, I'm going to wrap it around here and I like to uh, twist it in the back away from my notch so that this knot and, or the twist of the wire doesn't get in the way. And then basically I can just turn this and I can twist it. And with those notches in there, this isn't going to move up and down over this. So there's our first part of our trigger stick with our um, wire hooked onto it. Uh, I think what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to move out here where I'm going to set this up and then I'll show you how to set this up. So just hang on and we'll be right back. Okay, so here we are set up on our game trail. Uh, and here, here's our imitation sapling that we're using. Uh, I tied my piece of string on there. Uh, it's just a couple overhand knots, whatever. Just whatever's going to hold it on there. You don't want it to come loose from there. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our stake part of our trap and we're going to pound that in the ground. Now, there are two ways we could do this. We can put our trigger uh, on this facing in towards the trail. What that'll do is that'll make this a, a much more sensitive trap, but when you have more sensitive traps, it's also harder to set them. It takes a little bit more to set them. Now, what we could also do is put this facing the other way, and which will mean our trigger stick will kind of be pulling on this, and it won't be um, as sensitive, and it, but it also, it might actually stick and it might not work. So, we're gonna try it this way first with our snare and our trigger stick pointing into our game trail towards our spring sapling here. Uh, and spring, I mean to spring it up, which is what we want this ultimately to do. So, I'm gonna hold this down. I want to uh, make sure that I'm, now I'm gonna tie my string here, my twine onto my trigger stick also, but I wanna make sure when I put my stake in the ground that I'm putting it in a, a reasonable place for the trigger stick. So I think this is good. Uh, I'm just going to use my baton, pound it in. If you don't, you can find a rock, whatever. Now, one thing I want to mention is I cleared out the leaves around this just for the camera view so you could see. But when you're setting traps, what you really want to do is not disturb the area any more than you have to. And you don't want to spread your scent around any more than you have to. So you kind of want to touch things as little as possible and you want to disturb the environment as little as possible. So. Now, our trigger is going to go on this way. And it's going to pull against our stake. And then what that means is our snare is going to be hanging out here in the, uh, in the game trail. So I'm going to pull down my stick, and I'm going to see about where I need to hook this. And I'm probably also going to do what I did uh, for the snare. So I'm just going to put a couple of notches in this, almost like what I'm you know, just some V-notches like I would on a toggle. What it'll do is it'll just keep my string from sliding up and down over the stick. So I'm gonna pull down, I'm gonna kinda hold my trap in place. I'm gonna see how much length I need here on this. And the same way as with the uh, snare, I'm gonna tie my knot on the back of my trigger here because I don't want that knot to get in the way. This kind of twine here, it's got a lot of little strings that get caught on things. So, But I'm going to tie this down. Like I said, I'm just going to put a couple overhand knots in this. Whatever, uh, whatever I need to to get this on here tight. You can see with this twine here, um, it's kind of, it's not probably the best thing. Probably paracord or bank line would have been better to do this with. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to give us a try though with this. So. I'm going to pull down on my stick to relieve some of the tension. And I can also, uh, I might need to adjust my stake in the ground a little bit. It's what I needed to do. It wasn't exactly straight coming off of this. And like I said before, you may need to uh, adjust your notches in there also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on to this while I'm trying to adjust my snare. Because I do not want to get my fingers caught in here and have this thing go off. Now it. I mean, it could very well just slice off my finger if I have just one finger in there. So I need to be careful when I'm setting these traps up also. Now, using snare wire, nice thing about that is uh, you can pretty much bend it in any shape you need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this so that it's right out, you know, over the trail of where I think uh, the animal's going to go. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to also 
try to force that animal to go through my snare. So what I can do is, you know, I can put some branches shoved in the ground here. Uh, you know, here's some uh, hemlock branches. I don't want to, I want to be careful. I don't interfere with my trap though. I don't want any of these getting caught in my trap. But what I am doing is, you know, I'm creating kind of a funnel for this animal so that it's going to, uh, when it comes down this trail, the only place it has to go is through my snare. So I'm going to move these so that you can see it's a little better when this goes off. Now, I'll give you a little bit of warning. Uh, the next part is kind of graphic for any of you uh, stuffed animal lovers. So you may want to leave the room during this time. I also want to let you know, you can let the kids know this is not the Easter Bunny. Uh, this is just that pesky rabbit that's been getting in your garden and eating up all your vegetables. So, here's what happens. When the rabbit comes down the trail, he's going to get his head through this snare noose. Now, once he does that, we have, this, we have the noose uh, set to a size where his body won't fit through there. So, what's going to happen is as he goes through there, he's going to keep walking through here because this is around his head. And he's just going to keep going forward. And as he does, what he's going to do is he's going to keep pushing onto this uh, snare. And you want to be careful when you're testing these and checking these out because you don't want to get hit in the face with this. And, you know, your trigger is going to fly up too, and you don't want to get hit by that either. So I'm kind of trying to be a little cautious here so I don't get hit by this thing. And I also want you to be able to see it. So... As he comes through, he's going to keep going, and he's going to keep pulling on this, and he's going to tighten that snare down around his neck, and then it's going to spring into action. Now, I'm going to show you that again because I kind of have my stick in the way. And you can also see what happened here is my snare wire is actually a little too long, or my string's a little too long, because what I want is I want this animal to be held up off the ground. Uh, it should snap his neck. It should be pretty quick and painless. So what we would need to do then is after testing this, we would have to go back through and adjust this a little bit to make it a little better. Now, one of the nice things about this snare wire is I can pretty much come around here and I can just wrap this around and it's going to hold pretty tight. And now what I've done is I have shortened my snare wire. As you can see, that should hold him up off the ground. So. You can see what happens. I've found a lot, you know, after the first uh, time that this goes off, maybe maybe you get two times out of it. You're going to need to adjust your notch, your notch in here, because what happens, I think, is uh, them pulling against each other kind of works some of the wood away, and they don't have as good a grip any longer. So you're going to need to adjust your notch a little bit. So, remember what I said, be careful, don't get your fingers caught in this uh, snare wire, because this thing could accidentally go off. So we're going to try this again. The little bunny's going to come down the trail. The bunny's going to come down the trail. He's going to get his head in here, and as he keeps going forward, he's going to keep tightening this down until he ends up uh, pulling the trigger off of here. And this is where the sensitivity of this comes into play. The more sensitive it is, the quicker it's going to go off and the quicker he's going to go up. And the less sensitive it is, the harder it is to spring. Uh, there is a possibility of him uh, getting out of it or not even ever setting it off. So there you go. It's a little hard to see like that. Uh, I think this is something you'll have to get out and practice just so you can see how it's going to work. Um, and you'll see even that, uh, what actually happened was I had wrapped that snare wire around, but I forgot to tie it off. So it ended up unwrapping itself. So what I wanted, to, what I should have done was after I wrapped this around um, this trigger a few times, I should have taken another end of it, you know, and twisted it off to keep it on there. Because that's really what you want, is you want this to be as humane as possible. 
you want that to spring up you want him the animal to be lifted off the ground and you and it will snap its neck so there you go um, the, a spring-loaded snare trap thanks so I hope you enjoyed that video uh, and like I said at the beginning here uh, I want to show a few close-ups of the parts that I had to carve out so this is how they fit together this is the trigger that uh, you know your snare was hooked onto and also the spring stick was hooked onto and then this is the stake the part that would be down in the ground now when I talked about this not fitting one of the things was I could have just cut this off and it's basically this notch here that uh, was a little bit too small would have been better had it been down below this part but hopefully you can see what I did I mean it's really a pretty simple uh, carving setup. I just need these two to fit together and then this will pull up on it and then as the animal gets caught it's going to pull this out which is going to release the spring and snap this up. So I hope this clarifies it and it makes it a little easier for you to see what was going on but this is uh, this is the stake part that was in the ground and this is the trigger part that was hooked onto my snare and onto my spring pole. Okay thanks for watching.